Hello, hello everyone out there watching, and wow, what a day. I mean, today was a really fast-paced day and a lot of stuff going on. The unemployment numbers are frightening. It really gave me a, a bad feeling in my stomach. Uh, just not good stuff. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's time to panic, but it's, it's, it's just a time to be really nervous. But I guess if you want some short-term good news, if you are unfortunately unemployed right now, uh, apparently, this package that they're supposed to be passing tomorrow, if the if the House actually puts it through, which Nancy Pelosi says that they will, so let's hope for it. Um, it's supposed to be able to give those who are furloughed from their jobs right now uh, up to four months of of a uh, full salary pay. And uh, I could get the number wrong, but I keep hearing seventy five thousand a year. I know that pertains to the $1,200 checks, so, um, but this is pertaining to unemployment. So if you are going to be getting unemployment benefits, um, or if you are on unemployment right now, uh, apparently this, this $2 trillion package includes uh, full, uh, full wage pay for up to four months. So um, what I would suggest, to be completely honest with you, because, I mean, I, I hate to break the bad news, but I think this economy is going to get really bad really fast because nobody's going to be able to pay their rent who's out of work. Rent kicks in on the first of this month. That's what next Monday, I think. And yes, they, they did put a moratorium on rent and uh, uh, and your, your mortgages, but the chickens are going to come home to roost. So if you're not going to pay your rent uh, for April, yeah, you're okay. The federal government's saying that they can't kick you out, but... When May 17th comes in, that's that 60-day moratorium. It expires. So they might extend it, but the more they extend it, the more detrimental to the economy it's going to be. So just, I would say just take a very hardcore look at May 17th. You're going to have to pay April's and May's rent on May 17th, and you're going to be coming up on June right at the end of that. So definitely keep that in mind. I would say do anything you can to minimize your bills because you are going to need every cent you're going to be able to earn, it, especially if you're working right now. If you're not working right now, I mean, talk about a time to scrounge. I mean, just um, like if you have some things around the house, if you're not working right now, if you have a nice laptop that you could do without, or if you have like a nice, if a nice appliance or something. I mean, I've been there several times before. If I lose my job, I start like selling stuff on Craigslist just to try to get some extra money to buy just some extra essentials like gas. Uh, now's the time to do that. Don't do that in 30 days from now, next month, because you're not going to be able to get anything for that next month because everybody's going to be doing that. So you got the early warning here. So it, you know, if you are looking down the barrel of that gun, uh, I would say just try to stay ahead of it. And if you're going to be looking at four months of not working, um, assuming that you're, you're a restaurant worker or a retail worker, or if you're being directly affected by this four month long situation where they're going to be uh, paying unemployment benefits, I know four months isn't a very long time, but if you're not working right now, I really hope you're not just sitting around, just sitting on YouTube, watching stuff like what I'm putting out and, and, and just laying around and just enjoying your free quote time off, your free vacation. Because trust me, if you have four months, if you're given four months right now, now is the time to learn an incredibly important skill. Okay. Very, very important skill. I don't know if you want to try to get into carpentry or get into this, that, or whatever. I mean, right now is the time. If, if you work in a restaurant right now, and if you're good with your hands, or if you work in retail, you, you've got to find a local plumber, uh, a local electrician, a local somebody uh, to shadow for free. All right? The government's paying for it. You got four months if you're collecting unemployment. All right? If you can't find a job right away, or if you do find a job, but you think that job might be threatened in the short term, um, such as that business closing down or whatever, you've really got to try to find a trade like now. And you have four months to get that trade zero in or zeroed in. And that's not enough time to get certified or anything, but it's a hell of a step into the door. And if you get four months experience with some, you know, mom and pop uh, plumber or whoever, they're going to be fine. They're going to get through this because everybody needs their plumbing fixed. Everybody needs their electricity fixed. Everybody needs something fixed around the house by somebody who's good with using their hands. But when it comes to restaurants, when it comes to stores, when it comes to shopping malls, I mean, it's going to get dark and ugly very soon. And if you are fortunate enough to have enough money where you can dispose just a little bit of your income, or if, if you are going to be protected from this, uh, this, I don't know what you call it, like this job um, downfall for the short term at least, then you might want to enjoy that 
those last few takeout meals that you really love. Uh, if there's like a place that you love that delivers pizza, you might want to order it one more time because a lot of these places are probably going to go out of business very soon. And speaking of which, I actually did that for tonight. Um, I mean, I, I, in no way at all do I, I'm not going to toot my own horn at all because uh, yes, I do work for the healthcare industry. Um, I, I handle medical records specifically. I don't know if I've actually touched on that or not, but, but, um, but I do have an essential job in the healthcare industry in the way that, um, uh, me specifically, if a doctor needs records, um, I'm the one who takes their request through fax machines, through phone calls, through the mail, whatever it is. They're asking for records, and and me personally, I'm the one who starts the process of getting them their records. Uh, so the patient, I've been seeing COVID-19 like crazy the last few days. They're, they're all asking for their test results. And so, you know, if it's not for, for my specific business, then the 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 process of getting records from one hospital to another or from the doctor's office to the hospital actually it's vice versa for me because i work for a hospital network so so uh in our, in my case it would be the doctor the the primary care physician asking for records from our hospital uh so i mean uh, my job should be pretty good as far as that's concerned but i do work for a contracted company so if desperate times come to desperate measures uh, our, our hospital network could technically go uh, in and seek out another business instead of us and not renew the contract. And all of a sudden I'm out of a job, just like everybody else that works with me. So, and that has happened to me before back in 2008. And it wasn't because of the financial situation. This was like in March of 2008. So, I mean, maybe it was, it didn't, I don't think it had anything to do with that. I, I just think that, um, that the hospital I worked for at the time, there was a lot of competition for that company who was servicing their, their medical records department. And uh, they just took the better deal instead of my company. So I was laid off, but not technically because the hospital uh, or, or the, the company that took the business, they wanted me to start working for them. So I didn't really have a period of time where I was unemployed, but I, I was kind of nervous there for a week or two. But anyway, um, I mean, not that I make very much money anyway. I mean, if, if we're dealing with a recession coming up, I mean, I'll be all right because I don't have a stupid expensive car. Um, I don't have these big lavish bills. I don't have giant credit card debt. I don't have to go shopping in the mall every week for a new outfit. I am not like that in any way, shape, or form. I nickel and dime anywhere I can. My cell phone, my monthly plan is six bucks a month. Um, you know, I do have high speed internet, but we have no cable television to speak of. I haven't had it for years. Um, the, the, the card that I have right now, it's, it's, it's valued on Kelly blue book at like $750, but you know, I've done all the work myself to it. it it's been tuned up. I've, I've redone the cooling system. Um, I've had the, uh, the timing belt replaced and I've done, I've changed the brakes twice already in it. Cause I've had it for, I think five years now. Uh, so, I mean, everything that goes wrong with it, I do everything I can to do it myself and I've accumulated tools over those years. So I've got wrenches and sockets and stuff like that, but but no, I'm saying this, like, take me seriously when I say this. If you are, uh, if you're good with your hands and if you are working for one of these industries that will be furloughed for a long period of time because of this social distancing nightmare we're dealing with, I mean, if you're going to reap the benefits of four months of, of, of quote unquote free money from the government, which isn't free, I mean, because I'm still working. So my tax dollars are going to your quote unquote free money in a roundabout kind of way, but what you really got to do, you cannot just sit and wait. You can't just self-isolate and quarantine and, and, and just expect that four months later, you're just going to magically walk back into your old job. Because if you have to sit out for four months, that job will not be there. That company will be out of business if they cannot operate for four months. Trust me. I mean, I, I'm going to pull up the article here in a minute, but even Cheesecake Factory is talking about possibly going out of business. And it's because they can't pay just April's rent alone. I mean, the dominoes are starting to fall, people. I mean, it's really starting to happen. So, I mean, I, I really hope more people take this seriously. And, and anybody who's listening to this, I really hope you heed this advice. If I were in your shoes and if I were getting four months of, of money that I wouldn't have to uh, personally pay back, that you're, you're almost having this money gifted to you, essentially, uh, just for dealing with the pain of being out of work. Now, it's not just paying you for being out of work. They're paying for you to hopefully in those four months either find another job in the meantime, which you probably won't if you work in the in the the, the service industry, uh, like the person-to-person -person service industry, the restaurant industry, the retail industry. Um, 
And, and if you don't find a job in those four months, hopefully you learned an awful lot about something that you could get hired for in those four months. And I'm not talking about college. Don't do that. That's no way. No, there, you don't have enough time for all that. Nobody has enough time to sit at college for four years at this point, because one year from now, we could all be in dire straits. And that's how fast uh, an economic depression can happen. And this is worldwide, folks. Every, almost virtually every country in the entire world is dealing with this problem in a very bad way. Everybody. China is saying that they're doing okay. They got it under control. But come on, it's China. I'm sure there's lots of craziness going on there, too, that they're not talking about. But, but now is the time. If you, if you, you might not like the idea of being a plumber, but if you think that you've got strong muscles and, and you know, if, if you're good with tools, if, if you can name almost any tool somebody drops on the table in front of you, I mean, you really should seriously consider starting a, a different line of work because there's going to be a lot of restaurants that disappear in the short term. I mean, the way things are looking, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully find, they find a cure to this in a very record amount of time. Hopefully it happens really quick. Hopefully we get extremely lucky. Uh, hopefully people... Um, I, I have zero faith in this, but hopefully people will keep self-quarantining. People will keep their hands clean. People have gotten OCD and, and the virus just like almost gets stopped dead in its tracks in the next week. Highly doubt that. I don't think that's going to happen at all because people are selfish. And when people are selfish or when they're sick, they get even more selfish. They're like, well, hell, I'm already sick. Why am I protecting? Why am I still coughing into my elbow? I'm already sick. Who cares? They're not even thinking about the people that, that they're, they're, they're protecting themselves from. Or they're, they're, they're protecting those people from them. They don't think that way. When, when, when a lot of people get sick, they don't use their common sense. They, they don't use their rational judgment. They just don't care because they just, they're miserable. And for all they care, everybody should be miserable just like them. I mean, that's, that's a selfish human being. And there's way too many of them out there. So I don't think this problem is going away. It's just going to keep getting worse. So, um, I, I mean, I'm sorry to rant like this. Uh, I, I just soaked in a lot of information today. Um, not, not information from the outside world, just a lot of self-reflection. And it's it's really been bothering me. I mean, like like I really got a bad feeling today uh, with 3.3 million people filed unemployment for this month. That should scare anybody because I don't have the exact number, but it was something to the tune of like like it beat the previous rec or the previous one month record percentage wise. Like in let's say like in a um, in February they they take the amount of people in the month of February who filed for unemployment which was like 216,000 people, something like that. And then they take March, 3,300,000 people filed the very next month for unemployment, okay? That is like, what is that? Like it spikes by 15 times or more. It, insane. Never happened in American history. So it should scare you because this is not, it's the virus and it's everywhere and it's only going to get worse. The only thing we can do is go back to work, just try to keep the virus out of your mind. And if, if it's impossible to do, which by and large, it will be just be OCD with your hands, never, ever touch your face again, ever with your hands. Um, and if you make that one mistake and you get sick, just hope you survive it. And hopefully when you do survive it, if you survive it, then you'll have a strong immunity to it and you'll be able to go back to work and you can live the rest of your life. I mean, that's just the way it's going to have to be, folks. I mean, I, I don't think the government should be shutting down at all. This country cannot shut down because if it does, it's going to wake up in a severe depression. And in the long, in the long term, two years, three years from now, the same amount of people I think are going to pass away, uh, whether or not if we shut down the country. I don't think it makes any difference. Just the people's habits, the way people treat their surroundings, I don't think it makes any difference. Maybe it'll spread slower in a depression situation because not many people are traveling, but I don't think it's going to matter because if people are dirt poor, they're not going to be able to afford sanitizers and soaps and running water to clean themselves with and, and a home to live in for that matter. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So I do have a few articles pulled up, but frankly, but to be honest with you, I did order pizza for tonight because um, my daughter goes back to her mom's tomorrow. So and she's going to be with her for a four day weekend because we we just alternate days in a very complicated way. But um, but I figure for tonight, let's you know, like we ate some canned food yesterday for dinner. I did heat it up. You know, I'm not a Neanderthal. I actually, you know, we we made a nice hot meal. But um, but I figured tonight it being the last night until I see her next Tuesday, um, I figure we'd order a pizza. And plus I plus I've been hearing a lot from from like the internet community by and large about uh, local businesses, especially restaurants, taking a massive hit from this, having to lay people off. 
and, and I feel really bad. So I, I was thinking about getting something like Domino's because it's it's a little cheaper. So why not? But then I thought about another place down the street from where I live, which they make amazing pizza. And why not give them a plug? I mean, I don't think anybody who watches this is going to be anywhere near my area. But Jodo's Pizza. Oh, my God. This place is incredible. It is absolutely amazing. This pizza is to freaking die for. I got a it's a one topping pizza. Just plain, plain one topping pizza. I got the large, so it was 13 bucks, but um, but I got fresh garlic. It's fresh minced garlic on top. And they put these little like puddles of minced garlic all over the pizza. It's freaking incredible. It just the it, it the smell of the garlic is making my my mouth water just when I'm thinking about it. But it's it's over on Park Boulevard in Seminole at 13050 Park Boulevard. It's not too far away from where I live. It's it's relatively close by. So that that's it's like a nice local pizza place that I can give my money to. And, um, it, uh, let's see, it costs uh, after, let's see, after the delivery fee and the taxes and stuff, it costs like $15 and 20 cents. And, um, and since my mom lives with me, she's going to keep an eye on the front door while I do this, this recording. And, uh, and I left uh, $26 in cash there. So I'm just going to let the driver have it. Um, hopefully that will help their night. Um, because I mean, Again, I can't tell you how much money I make, but trust me, nobody who makes as much as I make uh, is going to give that kind of a tip. Trust me. But, you know, I'm the kind of person who doesn't give a shit about money. I, I just don't care. Um, as long as I have what I need to survive, I do have a couple things I like. You know, I like a glass of rum. I like to vape, my, my vape stick. I like, I like to vape, but like I mentioned the other night, I bought a bottle of vape juice that'll last me six, I think it's about, well, it might be like five months because I bought a half size. I usually buy like like a full size, which lasts me like nine months. I, I paid like 16 bucks for essentially five months worth of vaping. So I, I pinch pennies literally anywhere and everywhere I possibly can. But when it comes to occasionally ordering pizza, something like that, you know, my, my daughter, she enjoys her time here. That's for sure. But I mean, as the summer rolls on, things might get tight, things might get crazy, um, but I, I just had this weird feeling that this could be the last time I ever have this pizza. I mean, the first time I had them was when I moved down here in 2005. Uh, I think it was like early 2006. Uh, I drove by that place and was like, man, that's really close to our apartments. I think we should check them out and order them. But back then, I don't think they delivered back then. So we just stopped inside the building and just ate there because they have like a little restaurant setting, a couple of arcade machines and that kind of thing. It, it, it's it's like literally one traffic light away from the beach. I mean, it's right there. It's super close. So if you're ever in the the uh, the St. Pete Clearwater area, and if you're staying around a place like Indian Rocks Beach or Indian Shores or North Reddington Shores or Madeira Beach or uh, I mean, Treasure Island's getting a little too far, but um, but the ones that I named, if, if you're around that area, Jota's Pizza is, is definitely within distance to to check out, and their pizza's cheap and it's freaking incredible. And I'm super excited to eat that tonight. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, I might as well just get into it. Again, I'm not going to spend much time tonight because I'm hungry. And yeah, but the stock exchange, I guess the only good news I could probably say is that we had our best short-term increase since the year 1931. And I will throw out the numbers right here. Um, getting rid of this. Let me just go ahead and pop up the, uh, um, the, the Dow Jones as I usually do uh x2 right dji and we gained a lot of points in the dow jones 1351 points in one day stock market grew by 6.38 percent at least the, the top 50 companies grew by 6.38 percent in the stock market really good gains and it's because they're passing this two trillion dollar spending bill now <laughs> this is a very short-term thing it's like it's a crazy roller coaster oh my god it went up a thousand points oh crap it fell two thousand points now it's going up another thousand points well the last couple of days, it went up, I think, at least 1,000 points. So it seems to be like trying to get back to normal, but trust me, it won't. It, w it won't. The only way it'll go back to normal is that this virus disappears and everybody goes back to work tomorrow. Then it will keep climbing. But this is this is a means to an end. This whole, this whole green triangle, this might be the last time you'll see it for a while. Maybe on Friday, tomorrow, we'll see it if they pass this bill in the House. Um, but I anticipate on this thing going red tomorrow because we're not going to know if they pass that bill till late tomorrow night. Um, and they probably won't pass it because the Democrats are going to stonewall on something. There's going to be something. Um, and after we get through this grace period of like of optimism in the stock market and, and by by short term, I mean like like a couple of days short term. 
this I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I would almost swear by this, that this number, I mean, it pains me beyond belief to say this because we all know how terrible the economy was when we hit this, but I think this might fall below 10,000. I really do. And if this thing drops below, I, I would say if this thing drops below 16,000, then we're in full on recession mode. And if this thing drops below 10, by the stock market standards, that's not depression because in the recession back in 2008, 2009, like at the end of 2009, uh, it did drop below 10,000. I think it was like down almost 9,000, maybe something like that. I mean, it was incredibly low. I mean, if you hit the max here, I mean, like, look at this, like back in, like, here you go, 7,608. That was March, February, March, 2009. So it fell well below 10,000, but it's been on the steady increase since then. But I'm just saying, man, I mean, yeah, you might say, well, we'll just be like where we were like in 2011, 2010. Yeah, do you remember how it was back then? If you're old enough to remember that as an adult, it wasn't good back then. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. I mean, was it depression? Hell no, not even close. But this is a whole different thing. This situation we're dealing with is a virus. It's not economic in nature. So this thing is going to, if when this crashes, I, I don't know, because it's not economic related. I mean, it's not the economy that's causing this because if the economy starts to go bad, I mean, there's, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, it's really, I don't know. I'm not an economist or I'm not an economist. So, but anyway, I don't know. It, it's just makes me nervous. But anyway, let me show the latest on the um, Johns Hopkins numbers for the uh, pandemic. And it's not good. It, it's bigger, but like they said, it's probably because the, all these countries are getting more and more tests available to more and more people. So that's why it's climbing more. But I think also realistically, it's spreading more too. Um, you know, you can't forget that inevitability. But here's the map that we're looking at here. Let me X that out, get rid of Jodo's. And if you've had Jodo's pizza before, they I think they only have like two locations, like ever, or anywhere. Uh, there's one I think in Pinellas Park and one here in Seminole. But um, Oh, I just heard the, the bell ring. They're here. <laughs> they, they literally just rang the doorbell. Um, but yeah, so they, I, I don't think that they're in any other locations, but if, if you've been fortunate enough to have them, leave me a comment just to say Jodo's rocks or whatever, you know, or tell me what your favorite pizza is from them. And I might give them a try if the economy allows me to, to try them once more in the future. But look at this number. How crazy is that? Now, I, I can't remember exactly, but wasn't yesterday like 460 something thousand, something like that, or like 450,000? I mean, we're, we're increasing this number by like close to 100,000 or 100,000 people a day who get infected. And we're not even, we're only halfway to a million. This graph right here, it's just showing exactly what, what we thought it was going to show. And now I don't know exactly what this thing's reflecting. If this is just worldwide numbers or if this is an individual area, it doesn't really say, does it? I don't know, but no, this is, this is worldwide. This is the overall number. So it's like exponentially. What the government is trying to tell us is that it's because there's more test kits available. There's more tests available. That's why, well, I don't really, really think so. I think it might be because, uh, it's spreading because people aren't keeping clean. People aren't keeping their hands clean. People don't care. People, people sneeze, and sometimes they don't cover themselves when they have coronavirus. Uh, it, it's crazy. I don't know. 175 countries still. It's not looking good. But anyway, I'll move on to the next one. I'm honestly, I don't think I'm going to get to the end of this. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of whipped up into kind of a frenzy of nervousness tonight. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, we had a meeting, we had, it wasn't an emergency meeting at work, but we had a morning meeting, kind of a motivational speech kind of thing from our boss, the, the, the director of our, of our, our, uh, area, uh, our department. And he was telling us that, you know, a lot of people are losing jobs right now. And he's like, if you, if you don't feel it, it's real, it's really real. And, and he put it into our perspective. He put it into perspective for us. He said that, you know, there's 42 of you on the floor. There's me. And then there's 42 of you that I oversee. And oh, sent just this week alone, and this was as of today, Thursday, Thursday morning, this morning, he was given the speech. And he said that, um, he said that five people th there were, he said, so far this week, I've had five past employees on our team that don't work here anymore that are asking for their jobs back. They want their jobs back because they just lost their jobs over the last week or two. And he said they sounded like they really wanted to come back like in a way that they might not have a job for a while if they can't land one at a at a past employer somewhere. 
and he he was te- he was trying to trying to um, really not 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 put the fear of, of the reality into our minds. He was, but he was also trying to motivate us to keep our numbers up, keep our productivity up, um, you know, keep our professionalism up. Try to try to be like employee of the month material kind of thing because there's at least five people that I know of right now that will jump at the chance and be in here in like 30 minutes ready and waiting to take your job. If you're not willing to put in the legwork, the muscle, you know, don't, don't be too comfortable in your job right now because your job is super real place about by now, especially when there's people that used to work uh, doing the same job you're doing right now. And if I just kicked you out of here and replaced you with them, they would do a way better job if you're just slacking on the job. And Florida is a, it's not a right to work state. Uh, the employer can fire you for no reason and you can't sue them for that. So you, so especially if you live in the state of Florida or if you live in another state where they have a no right to work state, um, guideline or not a guideline, but a law. Um, yeah, you really should be stepping up your game. If you're still employed right now, you should be thanking the lucky stars that you're still employed and you should be ready and willing to do anything you can possibly do to keep that job. No matter how frustrating or irritating the job might be, or what your your manager is asking you to do, hey, at least you've got one. At least you're making money, and also you probably still have insurance. A lot of people forget about that. If you lose your job and you go on unemployment, you don't have insurance because you're not working for that employer anymore. What if you get sick? What if you get coronavirus? What if I don't know you break your leg or something? I mean, it, it just never ends, people. That's why I'm so freaking stressed out right now because it's just. I don't know that the reality gets more real every day and, and and I haven't seen it firsthand. I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't directly know anybody, at least my closest friends. I mean, I have a lot of family who live out of state, my, like almost all of my family does. I, I have a few, a couple of family members here, but, um, but my friends here, they, they work in like insurance and, and, um, I, I have one friend that works in a call center. Um, so I don't know if he's still okay with his job, but, but his call center sells stuff. Like they, they actually sell a very specific, uh, set of items. Now, fortunately, I'm not going to tell you what they, well, I, I, I mean, why wouldn't I, I guess it, it, you're never going to figure out who it is anyway, but, but they sell, um, they sell like pool cleaning kits. Like that's their specialty. They sell, they sell uh, pool cleaning supplies. And he works in the call center where he fulfills orders and he explains what certain things do and this, that, and the other. So I don't know if his job will be okay. I mean, Florida's got a lot of swimming pools, so he's probably going to be okay. But I mean, he, he works in a call center, so he's not in retail. So, so I mean, any phone-based job, I'm sure people are going to be okay for a while, but, but you never know. I mean, if, if, if the, the company's overhead takes a big hit and people just aren't buying stuff because they can't afford it, well, then that's when it starts to trickle down into other sectors. People who work in call centers that that work for companies that 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 uh, rely on the public at large to buy whatever it is that they sell. If we hit a recession or God forbid a depression, nobody's going to be buying any pool anything. For example, so I don't know. I, I can't really suggest anything. I mean, if you're a nurse, you're going to get through this just fine. Just don't just you know don't die from coronavirus. Same with a doctor, anybody who works as a healthcare worker who has credentials in order to do so, you're going to get th- through this just fine. And you should. I mean, you should be making top dollar. You should be coming out of this owning like a, an $800,000 house in a place where the average person is is living in a $100,000 house, for example, because the amount of risk these people are putting themselves through, it, it's, un- it's insane. So um, let me just bang through a couple of these here. Um, I had some stuff lined up. But I might just give the gist of it because I do usually read through the articles and I'll see if I can um, give a little bit of insight into what I've pulled up here. This one first comes from Fox News. So China cashes in off coronavirus by selling Spain $467 million in supplies. Some of them were substandard and China did admit that that some of them did not technically pass inspection like some of the supplies that they gave to them. Could have been masks. It might have been um, other supplies to fight against coronavirus. I mean, everything was to fight against the pandemic. But, um, but yeah. But that's basically the sense of this um, is that China was given um, uh, supplies, but but the way that the Chinese media worded it was that they were essentially donating it. Like, see, like the word donate kind of pops up here. But it's not been donated. They didn't donate anything. Uh, in fact, Spain actually paid for it. And we know how China works. We know that if you want a cheap knockoff or if you want something that's that's substandard, it's going to have made in China printed on it somewhere. So, you know, you, you definitely got to consider that. But China is not the only place, though. I mean, this thing goes into other places. So Italy, 
uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so that starts off with Spain, but Italy, um, with their country, Beijing, they sent in more than 300 Chinese intensive care doctors to help the country. Um, and then it talks about the, the numbers in Italy. Um, though the country has close ties with the United States, Italy has turned to China, Russia, and Cuba for help. Well, the problem is, is if you go back to this map, and, and assuming that you live in the United States, but if you don't, then this doesn't really pertain to you. But look at this. This, this is, we will become the leading country in the world with coronavirus cases. And, and, you know, oh, we already are. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. I thought I was going to save that for Friday night, but look at this. We are officially the most infected country on earth right now. Now, what the government is trying to tell us, the government's trying to t trying to inform us that, look, the number's scary. It might freak you out. Like, oh, my God, we're like number one for coronavirus. I mean, it's pandemonium. It's not necessarily that because other countries, especially China, because they, they underreport their numbers because they're a communist government and they can they can, you know, suppress their statistics. But but there are places around the world where they just don't have testing. I mean, could you imagine certain countries in Africa where these these bubbles are getting bigger? I mean, they don't have the same standards and practices that we have here in our first world nation. They could be spreading it vastly, and we just don't know. So just because the number shows that we're number one, which, I mean, obviously it clearly does, but but that doesn't necessarily say that we're going to suffer the worst of the worst when it comes to this. It's just showing that that we're ahead of the game with in terms of testing people. That's why the number got up, because... These aren't people who are infected, period. These are people who are infected and were tested, and those test results were reported to the CDC. So, but yeah, I, I was thinking we were, I was going to end up saving that for, um, for tomorrow. And in fact, since Italy was so close to China before this number came out, I thought that, that uh, China or Italy was going to jump to number two briefly, but no, we just shot straight up to the top today. Very scary. Very, very scary. And the overall number is, is equally as scary. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's enough to freak you out, people. And, and to be frank with you, the economy scares me way more than the coronavirus. I mean, if you're scared about the virus, I mean, maybe you have a health condition. Maybe you've got underlying health problems of some sort that might um, put you at a disadvantage if you do get coronavirus. But but you know what? To, to the vast majority, it, it should not be coronavirus you should be scared about. You should be scared about the fact that restaurants are closed, that businesses are closed. Now, there is, if you want to find any silver lining to that, nobody can go shopping anywhere. You can't even shop on Amazon right now. I tried. I tried to see, see how much my webcam was going for because I'm getting paid tomorrow. So I thought maybe I can squeeze 50 bucks into getting some sort of a webcam, something that I can put my face on when I do these. But Amazon is not letting me buy anything related to a camera. I went to Walmart. They did have some for sale, but I wasn't going to get them until mid-April or one of them until mid-April. So right now people are stuck in their homes and they can't spend their money because nobody's delivering anything unless you want to buy a local takeout or, you know, something that's local. Like, like Best Buy, like there are some big box retailers that you can buy online and pick up at their storefront. I mean, there still are some people who are trying to stay alive, but, um, but you know, I mean, this is getting real people and, and, and this hasn't even been two full weeks yet. We're only into the second week of this shutdown, two weeks. Imagine four months later. It should be very scary. Uh, Cuba, the same thing with the country of Cuba. They also uh, gave, well, temporarily gave 37 Cuban doctors and 15 nurses who previously battled Ebola in Africa. They showed up in Italy, helped to ready, or they, they were ready to help the country. Um, so uh, Beijing, they also came to Japan's rescue. So there were some points here where there's other countries helping other countries. But frankly, the United States is the leading country in numbers right now uh, of confirmed numbers. So... You can't really expect the United States to help the entire world out with this situation because we've got a lot of problems happening here. And the the U.S. dollar is kind of the gold standard for the world's economy, and we are not going to come out of this very well at all. So, I mean, I hate to say doom and gloom, but, but I'm telling you, if you get four months off here, don't treat it like a vacation. I swear you're going to regret that for the rest of your life. Please use every single day try to use 12 hours of every waking day that you are furloughed from your job to find something find something that will get you through this depression that we're going to end up having to endure you've got to you've you've got to do something i mean i i know i've said this over and over again but you've got to do something 
to, to try to find some way that you can get yourself an inch ahead of the status quo of the rest of the population. You got to jump out somewhere. And, and I honestly wouldn't suggest going into like the arts and philosophy and this, that, and the other. No, you need to do like hands-on stuff. Like you, you really got to start to specialize in something. Um, I don't know. I don't know, you know, just, or not. I mean, that, that's what my common sense tells me. So, you know, take it for whatever you want to take it for. But um, anyway, let me just do like one or two more. Uh, let's see, coronavirus. I, I want to get into an article I saw in the Virgin Islands, the United States Virgin Islands. I went there a few years ago, so so I can kind of understand what they're going through right now. Um, not going to get into the details with this, but the coronavirus recession update, record 3.3 million claims. Uh, for unemployment benefits, I already talked about that, so I'll go ahead and skip past it. But if you haven't heard anything about this, read it. Seriously, read it. This is on Investors.com. I can't vouch for them because I don't know Investors.com very well. Um, but I assume this is probably fairly accurate because this is reported all over the place today. So look into those unemployment claims. And also, if you find what they think next month might look like, and if they give you a number, put it down in the comment section because I would really be curious to find out. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at work full time. I have my daughter for half the time, so I can't really look at everything. So, um, but I, I'm trying. I'm trying. So let's see here. Uh, let me see what this number four is here. It's forbidden. Okay. Well, I guess they shut me out. Uh, let's go to number five then. Let's see what Yahoo News is showing. This is scary. All right. This is, this is regarding like Cheesecake Factory. You know, Cheesecake Factory might file for unemployment, pretty, or unemployment for um, um, bankruptcy pretty soon. But essentially, where's the headline? Here it is. The Cheesecake Factory, as well as Subway and other major retailers, they tell their landlords they cannot pay their April rent due to coronavirus. So you're starting to see the first dominoes fall. And if you're a Cheesecake Factory fan, which I am proudly not because I hate cheesecake, but I know a lot of people love them, so I, I, I do respect the cheesecake. Although I will never eat another piece of it ever again for the rest of my life. But um, but there are some other companies like H&M, Mattress Firm. Then they mentioned Subway already. But these companies could end up going under because they can't afford their rent. And if you can't afford your rent, you're going to get kicked out. Cheesecake Factory, is, is it's, it's a restaurant in the mall. And all the malls are closed around the country for the most part. So the Cheesecake Factory has to be closed. And... I mean, I, this, this, these are the first few dominoes falling, folks. It's already happening, so definitely look into that. And and that's not hard to find. Just I'm sure if you just Google Cheesecake Factory, that'll probably instantly come up. Um, you can read the details in, into that situation. Um, I just got some sis, um, sis, some statistics from uh, the restaurant industry. This is on restaurant.org. I was hoping to get a .gov site, but the next one I bring up will be .gov in terms of retail, but the restaurant industry, it's an $899 billion business, and that's its projected sales for this year, which it clearly won't come anywhere near. Um, there are 1 million plus restaurant locations in the United States. There's 15.6 million people working in the restaurant industry. 63% of consumers would rather spend money on an experience rather than purchase an individual item. So the number of middle-class jobs which is between 45 and 75 K in the restaurant industry grew 80, it grew 84% between 2010 and 2018, more than three times faster than in the overall economy. And the 84% into this, this booming economy that we were living in a couple of weeks ago and prior, that is a lot of people. And that, that should light a fire under your ass when it comes to you having four months off. Okay. Just, I mean, I could not stress that enough. I mean, if I, if I had four months off, I am not going to waste it at this point, knowing what's lying ahead. And follow the news every day. Stay ahead of it. Like, look, like Google, like most in-demand jobs. Do that every single day because it's going to start changing really quickly. You're going to start seeing a lot of hands-on stuff start to get pushed up to the front. Anything that you can get yourself into. And, and, and if you're good with your hands, but you don't know crap about the industry, just just be extremely motivated, extremely excited. Go to a, a mom and pop plumber kind of business, like just just a, a, a one man show or maybe a five man show kind of thing, and and just tell them that you'll work for free, 
and, and you have to be like eager to the max to learn everything. Like, like don't be overly like, Oh no, no, I'll get that for you. I'll get that. Like, like don't freak them out because you're just going to piss them off by doing that. But you know, blend into blend into their mojo, blend into their environment and just, just take, just, just soak up every amount of it that you possibly can. Oh my God. I don't know. This is just freaking me out. I mean, I, I wanted to talk coronavirus, but this, I think I'm going to be taking a quick right turn away from coronavirus and focusing on these numbers because that's, it, it's just, it's going to affect everybody. I'm just telling you, telling you straight up. All right. So I'm going to get into the Virgin Islands here. Let me, let, let me just see what this is real quick. Okay. Yeah. So this is on the U S Bureau of labor statistics in terms of the retail industry. It employs 4,768,900 people. Um, at least as of the year 2018. And this is this is the retail sales workers. So it's not people that probably stock shelves or people that, you know, like, like the, the more specialized roles when it comes to like maybe cleaning the stores and things like that. Um, this is for the people that sell stuff and nobody's selling anything in a store right now. So I would assume that the number of people filing for unemployment in this sector alone is probably pretty close to that. I'm sure it's over 3 million. Um, so, and these people don't make very much money. I, I did this in high school. Um, I worked at Aeropostale in the mall when I was in a uh, junior in high school. Then I went to work for UPS when I was a senior and I unloaded semi trucks. I think that's what jacked up my back in the long term. but, uh, that was a, that was a terrible job. I mean, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Talk about heavy labor. That sucked. But, uh, yeah, we had to unload two semis. There, there was one, there was me and my partner. Just the two of us. We had to unload two full-size semis filled with boxes. And none of them tell you how much they weigh. So you might pick up a shoe box that weighs like, what, like a pound and a half. And then the one lying right next to it, same shape, same size, same everything. You might lift that up and that might be 65 pounds. So you could see where your back could get jacked up somewhat quickly in that, in that line of work. But um, anyway, th those are some statistics that you might be interested in looking at. Um, that was the one that was most alarming to me, the amount of people that live in this country that are directly being affected by this coronavirus and, and this whole stay-at-home order that's being um, introduced around the country right now. And then getting into the Virgin Islands, I mean, I, I know it's it's not mainstream. It's by any means. I mean, nobody's probably even thought about the Virgin Islands because it's such an isolated place. St. Thomas, only it's only like 35 square miles. It's a very small place, but the cruise line industry shut down. When it comes to St. Thomas, at least, with um, with Charlotte Amelie, which is their their main town settlement, whatever it is you want to call it, um, it's 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 the main it's the it's the main uh, uh, city in in um, the U the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they are dealing with some serious hardships because the cruise line industry has shut down. And, and when I went and stayed in Charlotte Amelie, I spent a week there. I didn't take the cruise ships. I flew in there on JetBlue and I stayed there for a week in, in a really cool hotel. It was like a bed and breakfast style kind of place. And it was amazing. The views were spectacular, just gorgeous. I went in April. I wish I would have went in the summer because I love the rain. I, I, I just like the, uh, the, the tropical, um, like, like the more monsoon season type of, of atmosphere. Um, that's why I love where I live so much because we deal with, um, we, we deal with the, uh, the, the sea breeze effect when it comes to thunderstorms like Tampa Bay. That's why they call our hockey team, the lightning every single day in the summer. Oh, not, not every single day, but most days out of the summer, it thunderstorms, thunder, lightning, heavy rain usually lasts like 15, 20 minutes and it's gone, but it thunderstorms almost every day. Anyway, that's off topic, but um, claims of laid off workers dwarf puny unemployment fund and the unemployment fund is very small in the USVI. It's not it's not big. And the unemployment rate in the Virgin Islands was 5.2% in December of last year, but it is getting much bigger. They said that there could as there could be as many as 11,100 workers that are underemployed or unemployed because um, because the companies they work for have suffered losses or had to close due to the virus. So 11,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. It is a lot for the USBI. That's a lot. Um, let's see 20 years ago. Um, the solvent fund, I think that was the unemployment fund, right? Like here's unemployment, yada, yada, it could be tens of millions of dollars this year. So the 66 million. Okay. The Virgin Islands had to borrow. No, I don't want to get into that. 
I thought I had a couple of numbers. I should have highlighted this, but but essentially what they're really talking about is because of the travel industry. And and this this doesn't just pertain to the USVI. This this pertains to uh, any of those small Caribbean islands uh, across the the Caribbean Sea. That that these islands who are heavily I'm I'm talking like 90% of the revenue. If I mean at a bare minimum, I'm sure at least 70% of the revenue comes from the tourism industry. And when you shut down not only cruise lines, but when you're shutting, like when the when the airline industry is taking a hit like it's hit, like it is right now, there's nobody who is down there on vacation buying stuff in all these restaurants and these stores and 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 these shopping areas and and these uh, the, these vacation excursions that, that people go on like snorkeling. You, know, you you get you get like private businesses that take boat trips out and take tourists out on like uh like coral coral snorkeling adventures and stuff like that i mean they are getting zero business right now and what sucks about these locations like the virgin islands and the reason i wanted to point them out is because they don't have anywhere else to turn to if half like like let's say 80 percent of their workforce goes unemployed because of the tourism industry is gone because i mean they're heavily reliant on the world's economy to to be doing really well and they're they're kind of the the final end of that so if there's any hint of a recession, these places get hit hardest the first because what's the very first thing that the average person takes out of their of their expenditures when it comes to uh, either losing a job or if the economy sags or anything like that? They always cut vacations out first and foremost because it's just the easiest thing to do with that. You're like, well, I guess we're not going there this year. And then that's it. You're done. I mean, and, and then maybe after that, somebody might get desperate enough to trade in their expensive car or whatever. You know, people start downgrading certain items like in their personal lives. But but places where people vacation to, that's that's where they get that's that's one of the first things to get rid of. So when you get places like the U.S. Virgin Islands, they're going to be taking some significant, heavy, heavy losses on this. Um, and it's going to be like really bad there. So. I guess when it comes to you or anybody else who is not living there, who lives in the United States, um, you know, if you come out of this okay, and if you still have a job in about six months, well, uh, I hope that you can at least take some of that money and vacation in a U.S. territory like the U.S. Virgin Islands or maybe visit Puerto Rico um, or a place that is directly involved with the United States because, you know, they are a part of our economy for better or for worse and um, hit them up. I mean, the, the U.S. Virgin Islands is, it's freaking gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous there. It, it's, I wouldn't call it mountainous, mountainous, but it does have mountain-like terrain. It, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing there. It's really cool. It's a really small island, but there's tons of stuff to do there. Uh, I went to Red Hook. That's, that's like a, it's like a town that's on the eastern side of St. Thomas, if I'm not mistaken. There was a Megan's Bay, which is on the, the, the northern end of the island, which is gorgeous. Tons of snorkeling. Um, I, I rented a, I, we rented a couple of canoes. That was really cool. We had like some, some dude from like the Netherlands or Sweden or something who, who had been living there for like five years. He, the, we paid him like 50 bucks to like show us some of the, some of the fish life and like, like essentially hired him 50 bucks for like two hours. He kind of just swam with us and just showed us, pointed us to like certain different features that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. But I mean, these people are going to get hit the worst. I mean, not maybe not the worst of the worst, but they're going to be taking nasty losses. And I mean, if you're stuck on a tiny island, I mean, what are you going to do? Just like catch fish and, you know, like maybe if, if you're lucky enough, you might have scrounged together enough change to maybe turn on the electricity for a few days. I don't know. I don't know how they handle stuff like this, but it can't be good. But really, the only other thing that I really had was the um, the last article of the Virgin Islands. And um, I don't think that it's really anything significant. The, the Virgin Island ports are maintaining critical operations. So so they're still, like, technically open, I think, but they're only, like, maintaining um, just the minimum, I think. Virgin Islands Port Authority does not foresee a shortage of critical imported supplies over the next month due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, okay, so when it comes to the reports, like like receiving goods and supplies and stuff, like like receiving food and receiving, you know, the essentials that they get on a normal basis, um, and that's pertaining to the ports. So our cargo ports are fully operational, territory or territory-wise, 
And um, the public information officer for VIPA told the Schwartz on Wednesday, the lifeblood of the territory is delivered through its seaports. From 2016 to 2019, average monthly freighter cargo tonnage to the U.S. Virgin Islands increased by 40%. VIPA issued a press conference Wednesday stating that cargo operations in the territory will continue as normal. The U.S. Coast Guard issued a Marine Safety Information Bulletin on March 13th as a reminder that the illness of persons on board a vessel must be reported to both the Coast Guard and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. So, and, and you know, I can get into the, like, they mentioned Puerto Rico and, you know, a couple other tidbits of information. But but if, if you do, if this directly affects you, uh, which I would be shocked because I think, like, 10 people or less watch each of my videos. But, um, but yeah, but just, just know that at least there's one person in the United States that sees this hardship that you're going to be going through. And, and I definitely feel for you. I really do. And, um, you know, it... It, 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 it might sound naive, it might sound stupid for me to say that you are, you know, you should you should consider yourself privileged to, to live in the place that you live at because it, you know, I know I know looks are skin deep, but that place is a freaking paradise. Um, gorgeous weather, gorgeous surroundings, but I, I could understand the hardships that you would have to face when the United States is dealing with a recession or a depression because, I mean, if we get into... I mean, you know, you all got through the recession 20, 2008 to like 2011, 2012. I mean, you're still there. I mean, you survived it. But if we hit depression type things, I mean, that might be one of those you're on your own situations. You might want to break off from the United States and just try to try to find try to try to rediscover whatever you did 100 plus years ago. Like maybe maybe try to rebound the fishing industry or something. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm just talking out of my ass at this point. But but anyway, I'm just going to cut it there. I think my pizza got here like 20 minutes ago. I don't want to eat cold pizza, but that's it that I got for now. Um, uh, it's day 14 of the isolation, by the way. I forgot to mention that, but um, that's the amount of days since the national emergency has been declared, and we're already talking recessions and depressions. Only 14 days, and it's looking bad, and it's only been two weeks since the national emergency had been declared. So I really hope everybody stays very conscious um, as to their place of employment, try to be the best employee in your department, uh, because there's going to be people that will, I, I don't know if I'd say literally cut throats to take your job, but, but trust me, you're going to have to put on an outstanding performance in the years to come. And you're going to have to prove to your employment, uh, officials that, that you are in, you, you are indisposable as much as you can possibly show to them, especially if you are still going to work tomorrow. If you're going to work tomorrow, just count your blessings. I mean, I'm counting my blessings because I work for a contracted company. Yes, I work for hospitals, but that doesn't mean my job is solid 100% by any means. Uh, it just means that as long as my employer keeps that contract good with them, then I'll keep my job. And I hope that we can weather through it. Um, fortunately, like when I was laid off from that employer, it was in the same industry, um, but I was only in one single hospital. And they, they found a better contract, so they went with a different company. And I was just lucky enough for that company to absorb me, the incoming one. And that was one hospital. The one that we work for is 26 hospitals combined, and they're all major hospitals around the state of Florida. So um, at least with that, I mean, I take some more comfort into that because that would be a very a very uh, complicated process to, to try to filter us out and filter, filter in another contract company. So... You know, I, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep my work productivity aces, try to keep, you know, everything as good as I possibly can. Um, and with that being said, I'm probably not going to get this up on YouTube tonight because I've really got to um, get to bed early, as early as I can. And I do apologize for the video that you did not get today. I'm so sorry. Um, just the news that I got today, like when I got home today, I was just frazzled. And, and I had to just jump online and be like, you know, is this economy really getting this bad? And, you know, sadly, it looks like it is. So I, I spent I spent the bulk of my time putting together uh, whatever I could for this video. And, and, I, and I am really sorry, but I, I will get both of these up tomorrow. Um, and if nobody watches the one that I post that I that I put together yesterday, so be it. You know, this is still just my personal training for the Spathon Express. I, I want to get that going. I want that podcast to take off. Um, so, 
I guess until next time, until tomorrow, Friday night. So hopefully um, we'll make the best of it for Friday night. Um, hopefully I'll put on uh, an extra long video maybe. I might chill for a couple hours. Uh, my daughter won't be here. I won't be going to work on, on Saturday, but um, unless my mom and I get wrapped up into a crazy awesome conversation, if we do, then you know we I might have to cut tomorrow short. But if not, then I'll keep myself available, maybe play some cards, maybe – maybe browse some articles as I'm chilling kind of thing. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But until tomorrow, please keep your hands clean. Please stay safe. Keep the six foot around each person kind of rule. Uh, not kind of rule, but it's literally like, like a serious rule. Six feet, people. Stay six feet away from everybody. You got a cough, cough in your elbow. Um, just do whatever you can to keep whatever that you could have from spreading. And if you're not infected, um, just do whatever you can to keep yourself from getting infected. Stay clean, stay clean, stay clean. Be extra careful out there. And I hope you're all going to be very optimistic for the weekend come tomorrow because I have a feeling I will be when I flip this mic back on. And until then, just stay safe out there. And thank you so much for following along.